This video is sponsored by Altium. In this video, we are going to talk about data augmentation. Data augmentation is a process that enables you to increase the amount of trading data by making reasonable modifications to your existing data. In this video, we're going to apply four different data augmentations. These are horizontal flipping, coarse dropout, random brightness, and random contrast. We can see our initial image here, and you can see here how it looks after we performed a horizontal flipping on it. We can get one extra image from one image and one augmentation technique. As a result, we add another image to our collection. Let's see some advantages of data augmentation. The first advantage is the increase in data set size. Assume you have one image and use various data augmentation techniques on it. As a result of this process, you will get four additional images. So, from one image, you build four additional images. This way, you increase the size of the data set by four times. And with the increase in the data set, you'll also increase the variability. Both these steps that increase the data set and the variability would help you boost the model's performance. We all know how costly and time-consuming the data annotation process is. Assume we have a single image from which we can create more images. This means we'll be able to annotate more samples, since we'll be able to apply data augmentation techniques to expand the data size. Now let's look at some of the practical things about data augmentation. Here's our file. This file looks exactly the same as the data processing file. Here in the third step, we have added the data augmentation, and on the fourth step, there is a saved data set. Let's start with the execution process. Here we have imported the horizontal flipping, coarse dropout, random brightness, and random contrast function classes from the augmentations library. Our first step is loading the data set. Let's start executing the functions. We need to rewrite this function, which is save data set. Let's begin with the execution of the main functions. We can see we have 100 images and 100 masks. Again, we have the same image name for the images and masks, 1.png. So we have the same pair of images and masks. Now let's visualize the images and masks again. As you see, we have six images and the respective masks. Now let's go to the data split process. We have 60, 20, and 20 images. When we build the folders to save our data set, we will change the folder's name here. Inside that data set, we already have the non-aug folder. So our next folder will be called aug, which is an augmented data set. Other things will remain the same, train, valid, and test. Inside those, we will have the images and masks. Let's execute this function. Inside the dataset folder, we have the aug dataset, which contains a test, train, and valid folders. And inside each, we have images and masks folders. Let's start with saving the dataset process and data augmentation process. The third and fourth steps are left. Let's start working on those. Step third and fourth, both would come inside the save data function. Here we have the save data function. It takes images and masks, and this is where we will save those images. There is also another parameter, which is augment. This is optional. If you say it is false, then data augmentation is not applied. If you say true, it will be applied. We have introduced it because data augmentation would be applied only to training for validation and testing. We do not apply data augmentation because we only want to increase the sample size during training. We don't want them to increase during validation or testing. Now let's start working on this process first. First, we will use this augment variable. We say if augment equals true, then we will apply data augmentation. Let's say pass. We don't want to work on this right now. We are going to work on the else part first. For now, we have one image and one mask. We say aug underscore x, and inside it, there will be your images and masks. This means it is a mistake if it appears in red. It did not have a proper indentation. Aug y should contain y, which is the mask. The images and masks that we need to save will be kept in these lists. Let's loop over them. For x comma a in zip, and it would have aug x aug y, we need a name. Both images and masks will have the same name. Also, let's create an index variable called idx. Initially, we're going to say it is zero. Now we need to have a name, and we will call it aug name. So there is an f string here. We're going to write name underscore and idx. Then we can say png or jpeg. It is optional. It does not have any problem with the extension. Now we need the names. We're going to have our path. So this is our image path. We will save our image. Then this path to save our mask. So it will be save dare images and then the aug name. And same for the mask path. Save dare masks folder, then aug name. There is the accent A, we will write cv2.imwrite. Then save image path. 
and axe. We will use the same function again, save mask path. Instead of the axe, we will type A. This part is complete. If you don't want to apply data augmentation, this part is done. This is not our main task. Our main task is to write the data augmentation. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task, with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. And here comes the data augmentation part. Let's write the data augmentation path. We have four data augmentation techniques. The first is horizontal flipping. First of all, we will apply horizontal flipping. So we will say aug equals horizontal flip. And inside this class, we're going to say p equals 1. p stands for probability, indicating how much probability the augmentation technique should have. We'll say apply it with a probability of 1, which means it'll be applied 100% of the time. This is our transformation function, which is aug. We're going to say augmented, and we are going to use this aug function. And inside it, we need to give our images. The variable is the image, so it takes the image, then we type the mask. It will take the mask, and we apply that technique, the augmented data dictionary. Our transformed image and mask will be x1 equals augmented image, and our mask will be y1 augmented mask. This way, we have applied horizontal flipping augmentation, and it would take the original X image and the original Y mask and give us a transformed image as X1 and as a transformed mask as Y1. Now we will create the same list again, aug X and aug Y, and we are going to append that data to this list, X1 and Y1 this way. We will apply three more data augmentation techniques. The second will be coarse dropout. The second will be coarse dropout. Inside Course Dropout, we remove some square parts of the image. Inside Course Dropout class, we have some parameters. As we know, P stands for probability. We are 100% sure that we want to apply and the maximum number of holes. Let's say 10. Maximum height and width of those holes, you can change them accordingly. But for now, I'm applying 32 by 32. The rest of the process will remain the same. Let's apply two more data augmentation techniques, random brightness and random contrast. We have four modified sets of images and masks, x1, x2, y1, y2, then x3, x4, y3, and y4. Let's add them to the list. This is our data augmentation part. Our function is now complete. Let's execute this. Let's go on to the data augmentation part. This function is the main thing here. For the training set, we're going to say augment equals true, but for the rest of them, we're going to say false because we want to apply data augmentation to the training part. Let's start executing it. As we see, the training part is working. Now we will go inside the train folder. It has 300 images. We had 60 images before the data augmentation, so we have increased the size of the data set by five-fold. I will show you some samples. This is the first image, and it is an original image. This is the horizontal flipping. This is the coarse dropout. That's what happens when we use coarse dropout. We introduced the square black boxes, so we removed certain parts of the image. And this is random brightness. This is random contrast. Samely for the next sample, the original image horizontal flipping coarse dropout, random brightness, and random contrast. This is applied to all the data sets. We have done the same for the masks. We have done the same thing with masks, but masks have a part that you can't see. Now let's save the validation data set and the testing data set. Let's check the testing. As you can see, it contains 20 images and their respective masks. As the same, the validation data set contains 20 images and 20 masks. We have built an augmented set of images and masks. There are two data sets for now. The first is the original, non-augmented, and the second is the augmented data set. 
The augmented data set contains a larger number of images and more variability. In the following video, we'll train the unit architecture model on both images and masks. Then we'll see how it performed and which data sets are most useful to us.